Good morning and welcome to Cooking with Sally J. This is June 16th. It's Tuesday. I was so busy yesterday I couldn't get out of my own way. Well actually I did get a lot done yesterday. Um, but today I think I want to try to relax a little bit. I don't know if I can do that because I'm high strong half the time. But what we're going to do today is make a homemade chicken pot pie. I have been trying for three weeks to do this. I had one all done, I thought, and my camera didn't work. And uh, so, again, I'm still making food for a friend of mine that had surgery on her shoulder. So this will probably be the last thing. The other two things are in the freezer. I might make a sweet. Yeah, I'll probably make a sweet. So you'll get the benefit of that. But I want to tell you, show you how to make a homemade um, chicken pot pie using your leftovers from your meal the night before, um, or two nights before, but don't go past that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna put about a fourth a stick of butter in my pot just to melt. And um, in my um, pan, I got my stuff out here for pie and Okay, so as you can see, I have my leftovers all on this cutting board. And uh, I'm just gonna add it, after the butter melts, I'm just gonna add it to the um, pan. And I'm sitting here thinking, how can I make this butter melt faster? Uh, I can't, so there's always the editing button, right? I keep forgetting about my editing button. Um, so anyway, I'll talk to you for a minute while that melts. I gotta get a fork. I uh, started back oh, probably a week or two ago trying to get two walks in a day because I feel like a failure at the end of the day if I don't have at least 10,000 steps in. I just, I don't know. I feel like a failure about a lot of things. <laughs> but you know, every time I do that, I'm reminded of that song, um, there is no failure in God. There is no failure in God. And I know that. Um, but it's important to me to be active, and I have seven awesome grandkids. I hope to have an eighth maybe someday, and I want to stay young. I want to be healthy to do things for them. And um, so anyway, uh, this friend of mine needs to walk, but her doctor told her she needed to walk slower. <laughs> okay, so that's, I have to revamp my brain on that. And you know, it's actually been good for me to slow my pace for that walk it's enjoyable and I still get a good workout but I'm not <laughs> then I come home and I look at my husband and I say you ready to go again and we go for a faster pace walk so it's been nice to get my walks in and the babies enjoyed the second walk um, so exercise is important but I'll tell you what the scales don't go down so I don't do it for the weight loss which I wish it would make me lose weight but um, I do it to stay healthy, which is important. So if you're not doing anything for exercise, you know, if you just get up and take a second to go, even a half a mile, you're, you'll sleep better, you'll feel better about yourself. Um, I'm not kidding. But I'm not here to teach you how to take care of yourself. I'm here to teach you how to cook. So my butter is melted and I'm gonna add my chopped onion. Now, it's about a half of a chopped onion. Um, I would have put the whole one in if it was if the pie was for me, because I like onion, I like the flavor of the onion. But I don't know that everybody does, so I'm just putting in the half a cup of onion. And we're not, you know, you don't have to, with the onion, I would just wait a couple of minutes in stirring. And then I've already chopped the carrots. I haven't measured them, I guess I could. I just love dirty dishes that I gotta clean up. Yeah, it's about, it's, funny. it's about a cup of chopped leftover carrots. Now, I have made the pot pie before with frozen mixed vegetables, and that's fine, um, but there's nothing like the fresh. So just add that in with your onion. And then we had some leftover corn, which I like my pies to be full. So, so it's almost a cup, lacking a little bit. Just throw that right in on top. And then we got our 
potato here, but uh, my chunks aren't chunky enough, aren't small enough, so that can be cubed up a little bit better. And actually, what happened here is we had baked potato, and I hate throwing out the, the potato that's not used, so I just peeled it and just chopped it up. But if you have leftover, like a lot of times I cook my potato right in with my roast, um, but we had the leftover baked potato, so I use that. So then I'm just going to add my potato, which that was probably a little bit more. Yeah, that's about a cup and a half of cut up potato. Okay, and just stir that together good. I'm going to add some salt and pepper which I'm going to, I am not going to add meat tenderizer and garlic salt. I will add garlic salt, but I won't add the meat tenderizer. And just sprinkle to your taste. I mean, most of you probably cook and you know what you like and what you don't like. But I like my food to have flavor. Well, flavor it'll have. It's, um... chicken, which I did not chop up first, so you just want to, I don't know what you can see and what you can't see, just take your chicken and just chop it up. Um, I'm a dark meat girl, uh, I know, the white's healthier for you, but when I make the pie, I really do try to have a mixture, but more, probably mostly white. But the dark has more flavor. When it's all said and done, you know. I'm thinking eat what you like, but eat in moderation. Let's figure out what's not good for you. And stay away from those things. And I've been figuring out lately what's not good for me. And it's I will do two cups of the chopped chicken because, you know, you're making a chicken pot pie, so that's what you want it to be full of. Okay, so there's two cups of the chopped chicken, and I'm just going to put that right in on top of that. Mix it well. Okay, so as you can see, the butter now has saturated, it has incorporated itself into everything. So it's dry, so now we need to make at least a little bit of a gravy substance to it. So I use the, I save the juices from the roasted chicken. I drain it in a strainer and so it's just the clear juice. And I have two cups here. I'm not sure if I want to use all two cups. Because one thing in your pie, it's important um, that you have liquid in it, but you just, you don't want it so thin that your pie's running. Yeah, I put two cups in that. And I am going to put a couple of tablespoons of flour just to thicken it a little bit. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to tell you, you're going to think, oh, well, I probably shouldn't do that. I do it. You know what? I watch myself on these videos and my expressions are like, I like, oh my word, I wish I could change, but I'm 60 years old people. I don't think I can change. <laughs> um, it's okay to taste test your stuff. If it needs a little more salt, then you know it. Or, But you do need to keep in mind if you're cooking for somebody else to be careful with the salt. They can always put salt and pepper on their stuff when they have it okay all right so now i'm going to show you this is a little soupy we don't want that so we're going to wait to see if that two tablespoons will help thicken it it probably won't because it was two cups so we're going to do four tablespoons and the last thing you want is for that to taste like flour i don't know that 
you need to heat up good, and as that's heating up, it should thicken. And I will let you see that. I hate having to close my blind, but the sun is so bright that the camera won't work properly. Um, but it is so wonderful to have sun. It is so wonderful. Today is supposed to get up to 76. I set up a little kiddie pool for my little granddaughter, Bryn, and after our walk, Bruce took her out of the stroller, and um, she has a shivery giggle. She's so stinking cute. And she started walking toward all the stuff, and she saw the water, and she put her hand in it, giggled again. I mean, she's such a dolly. <clears throat> she's 15 months old, very bright. Uh, Does that feel good? Does that feel good? You like that? Yeah. You're so big. You're so big. <laughs> I love you to the moon and back. You know it. You want out? You want out? There is nothing in the world like grandchildren. Well, I thought there was nothing in the world like kids. I love my kids. I hated empty nesting. I totally hated empty nesting. I told my grand, my oldest granddaughter yesterday, I said, what would make me happy is all my kids just moving in and living with me. And she said, oh, Mimi, you'd get sick of us. And I said, I would never, no, she said, I'd get tired of, you would get tired of us. And I said, no, I would get tired. I would never get tired of you. But that's not how it works. You know, you have to empty nest. You have to learn to get along with your spouse again when you're first married it was just you and him and uh, then your kids come and you can't find time for each other now my kids are gone and we still can't find time to do anything together it seems like we do a lot together but we don't go and do something together and I'm ready to go somewhere and do something together okay so I got it thickened up and I added about another cup of chicken and I added a can of yellow string beans um, just to give it an extra I didn't want to add more flour okay so it's all thick and I'm gonna shut the camera off set this aside and get ready to make the pie crust and we will fill it. We will be back in a little bit. Okay. We're back again in my kitchen. And let's say somebody wrote me and told me that they felt like when they turned on my videos that they felt like they were just walking into my kitchen with a friend and I guess I really like that I would that's how I would do it you would be welcomed in my kitchen but what you would really see is Paige's pajamas over there by the mixer and a little bit of clutter on my um, dishwasher we live people we live but I would want you to be welcome in my home and I would want you to feel that you were welcome in my home all right so now we're gonna make a pie crust and put the pie together so I did an apple pie crust recipe and um, we're going to do the same thing. I like this pie crust. It works well for me. Don't have my rolling pin. Can't do much without a rolling pin. Oh. My grandkids put the stuff away for me and not everything was where I would put it. So what I do is I follow the Crisco can it's recipe. A great recipe. I follow that and I add one egg and I add a teaspoon of vinegar. Okay, so <laughs> we're here, people. <laughs> okay, it says two cups of all purpose flour, but I do not want to use two cups of all purpose flour because I want to know that I have enough crust to roll out for the bottom and the top. This is supposed to be either two separate pies or one pie with the bottom and the top. 
but I find if I follow this recipe that I barely have enough to get over to the top and I don't like that and I'm a person that I'd rather know that I get enough than take a chance on maybe having enough so I add to it okay so what we're gonna do now is add three cups of flour One. Oops, those are the two cups, so I better watch what I'm doing because I don't really want to double the recipe. Three. There's the three cups of flour. Get that out of my way. Also notice I didn't get my pie plate out, but I can do that anyway, anytime. And this says a teaspoon of salt, which I have right here. Even though I added the extra flour, I don't add the extra of anything else. And then it says three-fourths cup of well-chilled shortening. Well, I probably will add a hair more than that, um, but not a lot more. Three-fourths. need to find it on here. Typically, I never really measure, but if I'm doing it on my own, I just throw it in there. Don't measure it, but it does seem to come out a little better if you measure it. Okay, so I got the three-fourths, plus I'm going to do a spatula full. Spatula, not a er, a spatula full, okay? And I'm just going to drop it in there in dots. I do not want um you don't want a big clump in your flour because it doesn't mix good so you want all these little dots in it just use your clean hands and just put it in there okay once it's in there um just gonna take your fork and I said this before I couldn't even remember what the instrument was see I did good I didn't say thingy <laughs> my brain wanted to um, the pastry blender if you have one of them and know how to work them great I have one I know how to work it um, this is what I saw my mother do it's what I saw my grandmother do I don't know how to use stupid pastry Kelly Blakeney knows how at camp, and it amazes me, but I can't do it, so we use a fork. Might take a hair longer. So what you're going to do, you're just like slicing the uh, Crisco all through the flour until it forms like tiny beads. No, that's not what I meant either, like tiny peas. And you can even take your hands and do this like we did with the biscuits to incorporate it. Because for people like me that want things done yesterday, this is much quicker. And the outcome's the same. You're just getting a little messy is all. Okay. Okay. So, this, see, that's kind of the texture that you want to be feeling. It's kind of grainy, but pea-like. Handsome husband, cute granddaughter. I don't know if you can see him or not. Come stand over by me just in case. <laughs> yeah, aren't they adorable? Oh, kisses. Mm, I love you too. <laughs> okay. She can just play. Just turn the TV down a little bit. The thing's right here. Okay, so now we're just going to add the vinegar and the egg to that. 
and then it says six to eight tablespoons. I gotta get something for my husband. So. It says six to eight tablespoons of water. Well, I do do that, but it's ice cold water. And I usually tend to do more. So, start out with a fourth of a cup. And I'm going to have half of that ready just in case. Now you just take your fork and incorporate it. And I can already tell I need more. together in little balls. So I'm going to take my hands and get back in there. So I'm together. So you're just going to work it. Not a lot. You don't want to overwork it. Um, you just want it to all stick together. It should look like a big ball like this. I don't like you sitting there watching me. It's bad enough that the camera's watching me. My husband sitting in a chair with a big smile, sitting there watching me. Actually, he's on the floor. Okay, so I got a big ball, so I'm gonna just divide it in half, like that. And if you're like me and don't divide stuff totally in half, use a smaller part for the bottom of your pie plate. So I need a little flour on my cutting board, and I need a pie plate. say grease it like I'm doing it with Crisco not with a spray because this is better for the pot okay now I'll get the flour on my thingy oh there we go thingy again I even got my husband saying thingy now he's been telling me something the other day he goes a thingy and I'm like what am I how am I supposed to know what a thingy is and we laughed. Okay, so I'm going to take the smallest one because I didn't get them even. But it's more important to me to have the top one bigger because I want it to spread. And you're just going to roll it out. I'm not great, like I told you in the other video, I really care about looks of stuff. I care about the taste of stuff and some people care about the looks. I guess I should care about both but just get it as round as you can get it. And okay. Alright, so remember how I told you how to get it in the thing? This was the biggest trick that I saw that I love. You just take your, roll it up on your pin like that, slide your plate right over, and just roll it. Look how nice that is. Perfect. Okay. All right, now I'm going to get my filling. different on how full they like their pie. I like mine full. And I like it to have a lot of meat. Now, I don't know if I told you that I put yellow beans in here to help. I would have put green beans 
if I had them, but I ran out of them, so I didn't have them. But I would have preferred that to give it some green to it. So there's plenty of yellow in it with the corn and the... Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty good. You want to set that aside. You're going to roll out your top. watched it. Um, what I did to my top is different what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something different today. I want to use the other thing, but I want to show you another way. And I didn't want to make two pies to show you. So. Alright. for Mimi to snuggie her and put her down for a nap. So that's what we will be doing as soon as I get this done. Now you need to go back and look at my apple pie pie crust because that just looks so nice and came out so good. This it's not that this isn't coming out good, it's just a little messier looking I think but Let's see I didn't have too much here at all. Okay, so now I'm going to roll her up. Yeah, because last time I showed you this thing. I had one of these things that I love, and when I bake for people, I like to use this because of the hearts, and I did it with love. But because I want to show you another way, which most people don't have things like this, what to do to get air holes in your pie crust. We're just gonna put that lay that right over the top and fling it. But look how awesome. Whoops, I don't want to pull it. There's your first hole. Ha. Alright, so we'll just go around, press it together. And this is a pot pie, so if you want, you can take your fork and press down. And I'm going to with this one instead of doing the thumb thing. You, this presses both layers together. Isn't that a sweet voice? I just. Nothing like family. just press enough to get the edges done. Let's remove the other crust now. I'm not going to do it because I'll eat them. But remember with the leftover crust, you can roll it out, butter it, cinnamon sugar, roll it up. Well, I probably will do it and let the grandkids eat them. But I really like them. Not good for me. Okay, so now you're taught. You need to um, have air holes. And we didn't make air holes. So my mom, I don't know why she did it this way. But that's what she did. She always kind of put a message like, I love you. You know, the XOXO. So that's what I do if I'm not using my heart pan. So you just take a knife. I don't know what you can see me doing. Just took a knife and just went that way. And then I went up. And then I just come down and met the slit. I didn't go into the slit. 
and then I come on the other side, so it's like an X, and then in the middle, right beside it, I do a half a circle, and then I go the other way with a half a circle, but I don't have the circle meet. And then again, after that O, I do another line, half a line, half a line. And then underneath that, I just kind of make a little, what might look like a smiley face. <laughs> it actually kind of looks scary. I never noticed that before. But anyway, that's your air pockets. And um, that's how you would do it. Um, without pressing something into it, making the little heart holes. I'm not really sure what you could see. So, I'll bring the camera over just to make sure. I don't know. I didn't want the juices dripping all over the place. All right. Okay. So, that's what you would do. Or anything that you want to do. Just, just as long as you have some air pockets for the uh, pie to let out its steam. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is bake it at 375 and high press shield over the top so that that doesn't, about 10 minutes before it's done baking, I would pull that off so that it can brown a little bit, but that's just to protect that crust from not getting overdone. You also want to put in one of these liners in your oven for all the drips. Have to move my security blanket, people. My security blanket. Okay, so put that in the oven. till it hits temperature and then I'm going to stick it in and I'm going to bake it. I will tell you later I because I don't know. I'm thinking about 30 minutes because everything's pre-cooked inside but you need your crust to cook. So I'm thinking about 30 minutes but I'll let you know. Bye. So that's our segment of cooking a chicken pot pie with Sally J. I hope that you try the chicken pot pie. And if you, it works for you, let me know to send a picture. It's always fun to see people cooking my stuff. And um, also give, um, this is hot still, so give these cookies a try too. They work hard. And if you want to know how to make those, go and view my apple pie recipe because they're on that video. God bless and have a good day.